Hey, it's James Fathers Rights and Resources, hashtag how I got custody. So the court system has to make findings of facts and conclusions of law before they enter an order in your case or anybody's case or any court case. This is something your attorney misses. And this is why guys should not ever hire an attorney and should learn how to fight the, the right way because attorneys won't do the job unless you light a fire under your attorney. Now, I had an attorney for a short period of time um, in a relocation case. I did all my stuff early on without an attorney when I got full custody. But when I was dragged into court on a relocation case, the mom lived in Los Angeles. I lived in Seattle. She objected to me moving 20 miles, 20 or 30 miles. And the relocation law is there to protect. Like, let's say we're, here's the custodial, here's the parents living nearby each other in the same city. The custodial parent moves halfway across the country. It's there to protect this person to stop the move and taking the kid away. My baby's mom lived a thousand miles away and I had custody and she objected to me moving 30, 30 miles and she had abandoned our daughter for a year and a half. So I was afraid about going to trial. And later I learned that I could do my own trial. And I've helped hundreds of dads and several moms put on their own trial without a lawyer. And at the end of the trial, the judge or the clerk, they say, you're the best pro se I've ever seen. Or they'll say, the clerk will say, did you go to law school? Where'd you learn how to do all this stuff? You look better than the attorney. The attorney's the one who looked like the pro se. So, but back to the point of this video, Findings. Now think about this. When a jury um, says that somebody is guilty or innocent of a crime, the, the lead juror stands up, <coughs> excuse me, and reads a piece of paper that says, we the jury, what? What do they say? I want you to think about it so you can grasp it, a uh, you know, in your own head a little bit. If you, if you can think of some of the answers of stuff I'm talking about, you'll grasp it. Or the gravity of it better. We the jury. Blank blank. Guilty. Or not guilty. We find the defendant guilty. We find the defendant not guilty. They make a finding. Or a conclusion. Or a statement. Or deductive reasoning. Or a belief. That the person of, of, of fact that the person did it or did not do it. That becomes a fact in the eyes of the law or the court system. So if you're not guilty and you got framed or railroaded, you're guilty in the eyes of the law or the court system because they made a finding of fact after a full hearing and supposedly due process, which doesn't happen a lot in this country. <clears throat> they um make a finding that you are guilty or not guilty. Now think about it. What if the judge says, you know what, before this trial gets over with, I've decided I'm going to sentence you to the death penalty. I'm going to sentence you to prison for 10 years. And the trial's not over and the jury has not made a finding yet. See, this is the basic elementary stuff that any lay person or every, any average person could figure out if they just sat and thought for a second. This is the problem. Nobody sits and thinks about this for a second. Dads are like, why doesn't the system um, favor me? Or why don't they do what's fair or what's nice or what's sweet and kind and loving? You're in a corrupt court system, in a corrupt world, and a corrupt person who you were stupid enough to have a kid with is coming after you to destroy your relationship with that kid. I was stupid to have a kid with a crazy woman. You know, I, I lesson learned, I don't do it again. I keep seeing dads who keep having kids with crazy women over and over and over and over again. And don't learn their lesson and you get what you deserve if that's you. So that being said, um, you got to think about some of this stuff. When you read something, a law or the best interest of the law, uh, best interest of the child law or your Troxel versus Granville and you're reading your constitutional rights, think about what it means. Don't just gloss over and say, yeah, I got constitutional rights. yippee ki -yay. If you're learning, if you're learning how to fight on your own, read this stuff, grasp it, look at it, and envision how I win on this point. I like a lot of states have a statute that says the court has to consider the best interest of the child, the wishes of the parents, the wishes of the child. Which parent is more likely to facilitate a parent-child relationship with the other parent? If the other parent totally flunks that factor, you got to think they don't let me see the kid. I would let them see the kid. I would honor the mother-child relationship or the other parent relationship. 
I win on this point, so I should have custody. Don't just gloss over that and say, yeah, that's that's our case. And then just gra grasp it and think about it and envision how it applies and think deeper than just on the surface. This is what's wrong with 99% of human beings. They don't think that hard. This is why we had a whole bunch of sheep wearing masks that don't work. 30 years of study of coronavirus and the flu, scientists have said masks don't prevent transmission of the flu. And here we go, we have another coronavirus and everybody's wearing a mask just because somebody told you to. Not because it was a law that was created by the legislature, which is us the people who want to create laws to protect ourselves. We're walking around like a bunch of dumb sheep because we don't think that hard. So, in this situation, with the court, think about it. A judge makes an order saying, you can't see your kids that long, and I'm going to have you evaluated for a mental health problem, an anger management problem, a domestic violence problem. Now, think about it. A judge says that I'm going to order you to get a domestic violence assessment. Meanwhile, you get four hours of supervised visitation. Did that judge make a finding of fact? Think hard about what I just said. A judge says, the mother's concerned about domestic violence. I'm going to order you to get a domestic violence assessment and evaluation, and you get four hours of supervised visitation. And that's all they say. They did not make a finding of fact you committed domestic violence. Now, sometimes they will in a restraining order. It's automatically in the language. We find that there's domestic violence. But they didn't make a finding of fact because they said, we need to order that you go get an evaluation to find out if you have this problem. But they gave you a sentence or a finding of guilty by ordering that you have four hours of supervised visitation as if you're guilty. Now, if I'm somebody's attorney or if I'm representing myself and that happens to me, I'm going to say, Your Honor, you didn't make any finding of fact. Give us a finding of fact as why why you're restricting the child from the parent. If they say, well, they have domestic violence. How come you're having us go get evaluation to see if we have an, if if he has a domestic violence problem? If you're saying he does, which one is it? Why does he need to get an evaluation if you've already concluded it? It sounds like you are worried that he might have a problem. So then, you're going to punish him as if he does have a problem while he's getting evaluated to see if he has a problem. That's not how this country works. You're innocent until proven guilty in criminal court. Same with his constitutional right to his kid under Troxel versus Granville. He's assumed to be a fit parent acting in the best interest of the child. That's how I'd talk like that. If a judge... Here, here's another great example. Sometimes when you go to court and you have a pre-trial hearing and the judge says, well, how long is trial going to be? And somebody says, well, I need two days to put on my case. And the other side says, well, I need a day. I only have one witness. And the judge says, why do you need two days? Well, I'm going to be on the stand for a day. I got three other witnesses. I'm going to put the mother on the stand and the guardian lad on the stand. And the judge says, no, you need to narrow it down to one day. So you're going to make a conclusion ahead of time that I only have an I only am allowed to present one day of evidence when I got two days of evidence. That's them getting the, you know, putting the cart before the horse or getting, you know, doing it backwards. You don't have a right to put a cap on the evidence. The court should hear. Look at the OJ Simpson case. That lasted like nine months, I believe. Did the judge say, okay, prosecutor, you're done? Or did they wait until the prosecutor says, Your Honor, the state rests. We are done presenting our case. When you go to court and you present bad evidence, the other side has a chance to object. But you have a right and a chance to be heard. This guy is making a like a judge who says you have limited time and limited witnesses. Cut down your witnesses. Cut down the time that you work on a case. Or the length of your presentation is called your case in chief. The mom presents her case in chief, calls her witnesses and stuff. And then you present your case in chief. She takes you to the stand. And ask you questions, and you get to you get to cross examine or whatever within the scope of her questions. Then you have your own questions for your case in chief. So you take the stand again under your case in chief. If everything that you wanted, if they didn't bring up everything that you wanted brought up, but sometimes the judge will cut you short and say, "I only want you to present this much evidence or have this much time." How can you make any kind of conclusions or findings, you're supposed to wait to hear all the evidence and make findings and conclusions and then get the other side to present 
objections to the evidence. You don't shut out the evidence before you hear it. That's backwards too. Now that's not necessarily totally related to findings, but it's still kind of the same principle where you're making a conclusion without findings. You're making a conclusion before I'm not even heard. So the court is supposed to make findings of facts and conclusions of law. Most case law out there in your state talks about making findings. Findings must be on the record. This person's an alcoholic. This person's dangerous to the children, so I'm limiting their access to the child. This person is whatever, so I'm concluding whatever. Both parents are great, loving, and sweet to the child, but I'm going to make the mother the custodial parent dads every other weekend. Well, why did you make a finding that there's nothing wrong with us, but then you didn't make it equal? Or you made the other parent a every other weekend visitor? But the biggest example is when they say we need to do a psychological evaluation and let, let's say you challenge them and say your honor you're you're restricting my visitation but there's no finding i would do a reconsideration if they make a ruling like that i'd motion the court there's no finding that i'm a danger to the kid there's no finding i committed domestic violence there's no finding that i have a mental health issue that impairs my judgment as a parent yet you get you restricted my access to the kid you're making a you're you're making a judgment or sentencing me to something when you haven't made a finding and then I would tell them, because these judges are stupid, they're just stupid jackasses who got a law degree and who kiss enough butt to get appointed by a governor to be a judge in a judge's position. Okay? They, these corrupt idiot judges don't know what I'm talking about. They really are stupid. And you guys go in and you say, I wish the judge would do that. I wish the judge would. And you leave it up to the judge. Make your case. I would go in and I would start with, with the, fir the first time I got court of visitation, I said, you know, my constitutional rights are at stake here. And the judge said, what constitutional right? And I'm like, you don't know? There's a hundred, and I had to tell her, there's a hundred year years of case law in, in the United States Supreme Court that says I have a right to autonomy with my kids. The fact the judge didn't know that was pathetic. These judges always assume a judge doesn't know anything and you go in and you present your case. A lot of judges say, oh, don't tell me the law. I already know the law. Just give me the facts your case. No, I'm going to tell you the law because I have a right to tell you the law. And here's the law. Why do you think judges get reversed and there's a court of appeals? Because judges get the law wrong. Don't tell me not to present my case. I have a right to present my case and remind the court of what the law says. You have your, your interpretation of the law for for centuries and for decades we had an interpretation of the law that allowed jim crow laws or separate but equal schools for black people versus white people and then the the supreme court finally said just one generation ago that separate but equal is not equal so your interpretation of law may be wrong so i have a right to present my interpretation of the law or the proper application of it but if they make a ruling and there's no uh Findings, I'm going to do a motion for reconsideration. There is no findings that I'm dangerous to the child, yet you made an order as if I'm dangerous to the child. And the judge might say, well, the mother claimed that you're dangerous. Okay, so allegate. So if somebody uh, presses charges or claims that I committed rape or assault, I just go to prison automatically for 10 years? Or do I have a trial? So you got to tell these people and unbrainwash them for their stupid MO. So the court has to make findings of facts before they make a ruling. Understand that. If I was you, I would argue that and push that. And if they don't make findings and they make a conclusion or an order limiting your access to the kid without findings, I would challenge that on a reconsideration and then go to, from a magistrate to a judge or a commissioner to a judge on revision. In Washington, I, I always do a motion for revision on my case if I lose in front of a commissioner. I always do a reconsideration if I lose part of the ruling in front of a judge. I have packets on my store for a revision and reconsideration that have worked for me countless times. And have worked for other people who bought them. But if they don't make findings, then they're they're not saying what... Think about it. They're acting and making an order, and they're not telling you why. That's really what it is. If they say, I'm going to order that the mother have every other weekend, and the father this, and the father gets gets has to get out of the house, and you're no danger, and there's no finding of domestic violence, why did they order you to do that? There's no findings of facts of you doing anything that warrants that. One plus one is two. There's findings you committed domestic violence. Domestic violence is dangerous to children and a mother equals the order you can have. You only get restricted access to the kid unless you get domestic violence help and you're kicked out of the home to keep the kid safe. One plus one is two. But these people go all the way to the equal sign and just order it just because the mother alleged it. 
If they say, well, the mother is concerned about domestic violence or alleges domestic violence, that's just an allegation. And we all know there's thousands of attorneys and judges across the country and a couple bar associations. That's also in my packet for defending a domestic violence protection order. We all know that there's a million people saying that, including thousands of judges and lawyers, that women abuse the domestic violence restraining order system and lie all the time. So if you hadn't found if you haven't found that she's telling the truth yet, then you shouldn't order me to do things as if it's true. You haven't made a finding yet. There's no fact. If they say, well, the mother's concerned, I would say, that doesn't exist. That's not true. If they say, what do you mean it's not true? You didn't make a finding of fact, so it doesn't exist and it's not true. And you're saying the child should be have the father kicked out of their life and deprived of a basic life need because of an allegation that has not been proven true, that does not exist. See, you switch their thinking up. Their thinking is, oh, she accuses domestic violence. Let me do this. Let me MO. My normal method of operation is just to take the kids away and have the father checked out. That's backwards. They don't even realize in their own head that they're ordering you to do something that's based on something that's not true. And then you go in there and you say, Your Honor, it's not true that I committed domestic violence and you know it. And they're like, what do you mean? I know it. We don't know. That's why I ordered you to get evaluation. If you haven't made a finding of fact, then nobody knows that that's true, which means that it's not true. So you have to explain, you have to talk to these people like they're in third grade. So the court has to make findings. No one understand that. If you don't get this or don't understand what I'm talking about, you probably should get a one-on-one -on -one consultation. It doesn't do you any good to watch my videos and get entertained and say, yeah, James is right. That makes sense. But I, I don't know how to apply that in my own case. Get a consultation with me. I get all, a million people in the comments saying, but my state is like this, but my judge is like this, but I lost. Well, f get, it, get off your lazy bum and try again. That's what we say in every other area of life. It's only in family court that my gender gives up and quits after one hearing. Let me tell you this real quick story. The last time I went to a father's rights movement meeting, every single organization that wants equal or shared parenting and every single organization that's a father's rights group, they're all idiots. They're all stupid. I have a video that talks about why the father's rights movement sucks. They're all idiots. National parents organization, idiots. They're trying to pass 50-50 laws that say, a presumption of 50-50 unless clear and cogent evidence proves that there's abuse or neglect or domestic violence. That's just going to make more women falsely accuse men of domestic violence and stuff because that's how they're getting custody now, you stupid, dumbed down, moronic, airheaded idiots. If they're going to change the law, they should change it. You, it has to be 50-50 unless there's an actual conviction in the law. But they're so stupid, they won't even think about that. They're so stupid... They don't think, oh, maybe people will continue. Since judges ignore good laws of best interest of the child, the alienating parent should not have custody. Um, the parent with mental health issues should not have custody. <clears throat> the parent who's abusive or has an abusive boyfriend in the home. Those are all good laws that all already presume 50-50 if you argue it right. The problem is the judges ignore the laws and ignore the evidence. So if the judges ignore the laws we have now, what makes you think the judges aren't are going to uh, follow? Oh, here's a new law. Let me follow that. These people are so stupid, they think putting something on a piece of paper changes the corruptness of the court system. Black people, people of color, had equal rights under the Constitution for 200 years. Do you think they had fair hearings in criminal court in Alabama, Mississippi, or Florida, or Georgia in the 1930s? Do you think that? Now, if you're a National Parents Organization or the Father's Rights Movement, you're a stupid, dumbed-down, brainless, lobotomized jackass, and you would say, yeah, of course, because on paper, the law says they have rights and due process. But anybody with half a brain knows that because the judges were corrupt or the juries were corrupt or the entire region was mostly racist and hated black people and thought they were second-class human beings, they would railroad them. Or if a white person murdered a black person, they would let them get off because they didn't value the black person's life. They don't, as a father, they don't value you in family court. You're a second class parent, so you don't get fair hearings. It doesn't matter what law that they pass. But I digress a little bit. And for those of you whining and crying, oh, you're all over the map. It's the, I'm giving you guys all kinds of valuable information, saving you wasting your time with the Father's Rights Movement, saving you wasting your time on certain other stuff. If you can't wait 20 minutes for a video to get one minute of nuggets that you want, then go spend $400 on a con artist attorney, you stupid jackass. Okay, 
this is just for the, the haters in the comments because I got haters in the comments who say, oh, James is all macho and bragging about what he did. I'm not bragging about what I did. I'm saying I found the answers. Here's the answers. I'm preaching it from the rooftops and nobody's listening. And then when nobody listens, I'm trying to grab you and shake you and throw water on your face and say, wake up, you stupid jackass. Go fight for your kids. You can do this. And then guys are saying, no, I can't. I just can't. And I can't. And the system and the system and everybody else. I faced a corrupt system too. You think you're the only one? You can blame the mothers of narcissists, but you're a narcissist because you're, you're so caught up in your own little selfish world that you're too scared to fight for your kids because you lost one hearing. Now back to my main point. The last time I was at a father's rights movement me meeting, I, um, at this Father's Rights Movement here, uh, meeting, they were all whining and crying and pouting, and I just sat there and watched, because nobody, I, I don't want to sit and whine and cry and pout all day, because we all know the system's corrupt. But then, one guy got up and said, yeah, I haven't seen my kid in a year. I said, why don't you do contempt? He said, I did, and I lost. And I said, okay, why don't you do contempt again? The first week she withholds a child, you go contempt, they're like, oh, well, we're going to let it slide. So then the next time you say, you let it slide last time, she's, you're not enforcing, you try it again. And then if they find her in contempt, you found her in contempt, she's not doing it. Now do jail time. The guy just had his defeatist attitude. He wants to sulk and whine and doesn't want to grow a pair. That's why I don't deal with the father's rights movement. All they want to do is whine and cry. If you tell them, here's a solution to fight, but it takes effort on your part, then they don't want to hear it. They want to wish and whine and cry and pout and whimper and go spoon with each other and cuddle and cry and suck their thumbs and think of a happy place in the Father's Rights Movement meetings or the National... Go to, go to NPO, National Parent Organization. Go to their Facebook page. I got kicked out of there because I'm telling dads the answer is to go for full custody and fight now. Here's proof that I won. And I got kicked out because they don't like that because they don't want you to attack the mother. Mothers are going for full custody and you're a monster and you're a child abuser and all this other stuff and your dumb ass is going for 50-50. So you're saying the mother's a great person. She's totally moral and she's a good mother. We should have 50-50. And she's totally credible. And the totally credible mother comes to court and says, this guy's a monster. So she says you're a monster. You just said that she's credible. So the court will believe her because you just helped her case. This is what the Father's Rights Movement and the National Parent Organization groups and all those other shared parenting, Americans for shared parenting groups say. Don't go in there too aggressive. And everybody that says that has never won a court case themselves with that strategy. It's just a theory, soft, gentle, being nice, give in to vicious, rabid, frothing at the mouth, radical feminism that bullies us into a corner and says, you and passive aggressive dominance bullies us into a corner and then men sit down and go, oh, okay, whatever you say. And then when it comes time to fight for something, fight for a cause, instead of acting like Martin Luther King or Malcolm X or Gandhi and growing a pair and standing up for something, you go, I want to stand up for fathers. That we are people too. Please help us. But don't go in there and say, the mother's a passive, aggressive, mentally ill control freak who was suicidal last week and wanted to kill me and the kids. I don't want to say that because that makes me look bad because I'm calling her out for her mental illness and her danger to the kids. Meanwhile, she's lying about you and saying you're a monster that you that you aren't. And there's 100 people who could testify in support of you. But 99 of them say, oh, I don't want to get involved. You know, I don't want to get involved in the mother's child abuse. I'd, I'd rather just let her abuse the children. I don't want to take sides, you know. She's a child abuser and everything, and her boyfriend's a pedophile, but I don't want to get involved. Can't stand people like that. Those people are a bunch of sellout punks, too. Oh, I don't want to get in the middle of... So, so if children are being trafficked and stuff, you're like, oh, I don't want to be in the middle of it. I, I saw somebody grab and throw a kid in a van, but I don't want to get in the middle of that. That's just too much drama. That's how stupid those people are. Anyway... I don't deal with the father's rights movement because I'll go in there with answers and what worked for me and thousands of other fathers and they'll say, no, I don't want to hear that. I just want to whine and cry and pout. I'm sick of that crap. They don't want solutions. Neither does the National Parent Organization or all those other people. They go in, they, there's a few states that pass 50-50 laws already. Arkansas says, maybe I should do a whole video on this. Arkansas says, the law says itself that, you know, assume 50-50, Unless there's clear, cogent and, cogent and convincing evidence, which is more than preponderance evidence, which means nothing because the judge can just say, I declare by clear, cogent and convincing evidence that the, per that the, the father committed domestic violence. It's just, they just rubber stamp it. Just like they rubber stamp best interest of the child. Anyway, 
Then later on in the law, it says, you could, they, they start with this presumption, unless the judge doesn't feel that 50 feet is in the best interest of the child. So they're right back at square one, and these stupid jackasses who wrote this law don't realize that. Like, they're really dumb, down, airheaded, moronic zombies. So, anyway, main point of the video, the court has to make findings. Little side note, the Father's Rights Movement, National Parent Organization, all these other groups are a bunch of stupid jackasses who are brainless, third-grade level IQ idiots who think going in and changing laws fixes judges who apply the laws. And anybody with half a brain knows that we've had unconstitutional laws passed or we have judges violating the Constitution and ignoring the law all the time. So, anyway... Make sure you understand this principle about findings. It's basic and fundamental. We, we know it. Sometimes when you can't grasp family court, family court is not criminal court, but there are some basic fundamentals that are similar and apply. A jury has to make a finding of fact that you're guilty. And if they find that you're not guilty, you get to walk out of the courtroom. The judge is not going to let you walk out of the courtroom if you're accused of murder. They might have had a hearing that says we need to hold them because more likely than not, they're a danger to society, so they'll hold them pending trial, but they don't sentence him to, to life in prison or the death, the, excuse me, the death penalty until after a finding. And they don't let him walk out of court and go free forever until there's a finding of not guilty. Should be common sense, should be straightforward. Most people don't get it. Most people don't argue it because he has a stupid jackass attorney who went to law school where they taught you a bunch of radical feminism and Marxists and all kinds of communist bullcrap. So hopefully that helps you guys.